This week I'm sitting down with someone you know well at 100 Huntley Street, Joe Amaral. You've read his book, Understanding Jesus. Now he has a brand new documentary, taking people 2,000 years back mm -hmm. to the place where Jesus actually lived and actually where he actually lived, Nazareth. So, so what, right. what uh, should we know about Nazareth that we don't know? Yeah, well, first thing I want to say is thank you for getting my name right. Because a lot of people struggle <laughs> with that, and you, you've nailed it every day. Uh, what do we need to know about Nazareth? Today, Nazareth is a huge community. It's got over 100,000 people. It's thriving. You know, it's got a, a big market, and there's cars and roads everywhere. And the first time I went to Nazareth uh, as a visitor back in 2002, I was really disappointed because I was expecting to see this little community and <laughs> soft rolling hills. Sheep. Yeah, yeah, and it would be quiet. But it was this crazy, busy, you know, Arabic town today. But the Nazareth that Jesus knew, the Nazareth that he grew up in, was actually a very closed community. Mm. Uh, Nazareth was started by people who believed that the Messiah would come from their lineage. Mm. Nazareth, I mean, the Netzed, the root would come from that city, and uh, the root of Jesse, the Messiah, would come from them. And so some people say, archaeologists will tell me that uh, on the minimal side of things, there was 200 people, maximum seven to 800 people. Wow. So, I mean, I mean you, you don't really think about this. It, no. It changes everything, doesn't it? It does. I mean, if you, live, you think you live in a small town, Jesus lives in a small town. And, you know, earlier we were talking about the whole scandal of Mary's pregnancy. Well, imagine only that many people. So the options aren't, aren't, aren't too many. So who did it? Who's the one, right? So it's knowing like that... like nine months of conspiracy. Could you imagine? Wow. Could you imagine? And, and so living in, in, in this small community, and we, we read about Jesus being a carpenter. And we always think of working w with wood, right? With lumber, with trees, and he did work with that. But the word that's used to describe what he, what he does is a tecton. It's somebody who, uh, I yeah. I know this word from, from university. He was like a stone mason. A stone mason. So th that changes things, not theologically, but it changes the way we see him. Because in Nazareth, there's nothing. So he's li wherever you live in a big city, think of a suburb nearby. People drive into the big city, do their work, and they go back home. Well, Jesus and, and Joseph did the same thing. They would go to Sepphoris, which was a huge Romanized Greek city with massive theaters and auditoriums and racetracks for the horses and palaces for the kings. So Jesus and Joseph would have gone on a weekly basis, worked there all week, come home on the weekend. Hmm. And so when you think about that, I had an archaeologist say to me, he said, look around here, look at Sepphoris. It's very likely that Jesus helped build one of these buildings. And so he didn't just spiritually change the land, he physically left some remnant of himself there too. And that really, that really blew my mind. And I think it's helpful for all of us to sort of, in our, to use your phrase, understanding Jesus, the name of the documentary. Yeah. To, to help us, it's helpful for us to think about what it actually was for him to be him. To yeah, Jesus. well, and being a stone a mason, Absolutely. And what's interesting is when he's in Jerusalem and he's having these dialogues with uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and he says, look at this temple, destroy it and I'll rebuild it in three days. And they're like, okay, we know you're a stonemason. We know you're good, but it took Herod 40 something years with an army and you're going to do it in three days. You're not that good, Jesus. And so playing off of that is actually quite humorous because of the connection to him being a stonemason. So I hope that people will get this video and they'll watch it and they really truly will understand Jesus better. You know, at 100 Huntley Street, we're committed to blessing you as you support this ministry. And this is a really, really great gift. It'll, it'll take you from your living room or your computer screen 2,000 years back to the world in the time of Jesus with an unbelievable teacher you know well from, from your viewing of this program.